Well, hello there, my friends. Welcome back to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, or if this is your first time, hello, new friend. Before we jump into today's podcast, which I am so excited about and I cannot wait for you to listen to, I want to remind you that my private coaching group, The Retailer's Inner Circle, is open and accepting new members right now. I would love, 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 love to support you through the rest of this year in our community. And I promise you, it is such a great community. We have some fantastic new things happening this quarter. If you've kind of dabbled in seeing what we have. We have some new things now uh, that I'm super excited that we just introduced uh, going on inside our group, including new marketing tools and templates, new hot seat coaching calls inside that group. I'm hands on in there. Can't shake me. I would love to get to know you and your shop a little bit better. So join us if you can. It's wendybatten.com forward slash join. You can find all the details there or send me a DM over on Instagram. Let's chat. I'll tell you all about it. And I'm not going to invite you if it's not the right fit for you. So there you go. Anyhow, I have a special guest today for you. We have had, we have a fantastic conversation. I can't even pull out all the gold nuggets that we have. And I'm going to tell you, um, I really, I know it's a little bit longer podcast than I normally do. I want to encourage you to listen right through to the end. It's just so good. Even my podcast editors and uh, Morgan, who does my podcast notes with us, she's like, that was so good. You know, so many nuggets. So even my team really just love this conversation. And I, I hope you do too. I have invited um, my friend, Natalie Davidson on. Natalie is a brand communications expert. She's a realtor and an entrepreneur. She's so multifaceted. This is her bio, but I'm telling you on, this, on the side, it's, she's amazing. She's known for her signature blend of wild optimism and truth telling. Having consulted with dozens of entrepreneurs on their brand identities, Natalie's adept at casting a vision of what's possible while simultaneously embracing what's actually true. All that to say, Natalie is amazing. She really is her high vibe, her energy, what she brings to the table. Some of these gold nuggets you're going to want, you're going to be hitting repeat (laughs) and re-listening to some parts of this podcast, I promise you, pinky swear. All right, without further ado, let's jump in and you can listen to my conversation with Natalie Davidson. Let's go. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers, and advice from industry experts. Together, we're going to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. Welcome, Natalie, to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so happy to have you here today with us. I'm so excited to be here. This has been, I think, a long time coming. We just hadn't planned it a long time ago. (laughs) So we're literally just going to be here chatting, by the way, friends. So (laughs) So, tell us about yourself. Who are you? What do you do? Who do you serve? This should be fun. My name is Natalie Davison. I'm based in Moncton, New Brunswick, and I have two businesses. My first business is that I'm actually a realtor in my local market, and I have a real estate team here, so I run a real estate business. I like to say I run a real estate business because people have a really hard time thinking of the bigger picture in terms of how do you do more than one thing. So I have a real estate business, and I also have a marketing business where I teach small business owners how to stay on brand and in integrity. And that business is called Merrill Marketing. And currently we're doing some workshops on social media for business and just, you know, working with locally based businesses at the moment, not always, but at the moment uh, to help support their social media efforts and their brand communications. Right. And and I feel like there's, I have so many things, (laughs) so many things I want. I also am a mom of 14 year old twins who like to eat waffles and play football. Yeah. There's there's so many things. So I love to call you a multi-passionate. Is that fair. Yeah, sure. Definitely. Yeah. Because you're like so involved in the community and you're so involved with business. And I love that you call it a real estate business. 
um, because people don't see that it's a big picture and you're not just one box. And let's talk about that. That's one of the reasons I wanted to have a chat today. We've known each other a while, but not really. It's so funny, right? I love yeah. the, the internet world. Well, and also, so, in, and I mentioned this in the intro, we lived in the same city. So I was in your city. I am no longer <laughs> since okay. I ran away from home and uh, since we moved here. And I love like your passion for local business. And that's my passion as and everybody listening is a local business. Can mm -hmm. you speak or can you just share a little bit of your thoughts on why? And I love, and this is the thing I love asking everybody, why are local businesses important to communities? Let's start there. I mean, we don't have anything if we don't have local businesses, you know, local business in vibrant local business community in a city means that more decisions are being made by local people, uh, more economic impact is being made to the local economy, more locally based decisions can be made based on donations and agencies that are supported. It, it, like when people say local business is the heartbeat of a community, like that can sound like a tagline, yeah. you know, and, and you can just kind of like gloss it over, but it's the truth. Like it's when, when I have clients move to Moncton from away, they're not just moving to Moncton. They're meeting my good friend and client who owns the wellness shop. They're going to meet my good friend and client who owns the spin studio. They're going like, these are the humans that we co-create where we live with. And the more people that own businesses, the more creating we are doing as a community. And so that's essential. I don't want big box to have all of the decisions about the dollars in the economy that I live in. I really don't. It's social and economic. And, and I think people, I think that was really well said as far as this, you know, all of the different types of community members. I love to say community members who are running local businesses make up, make up our communities and in interesting ways. And again, one of the reasons I wanted to chat with you today and what I think I would love for you to share your take on, and we speak about these community members in local businesses and everyone listening today, we are all doing things so creatively and so differently. <laughs> like, it, And this is, this is my jam. As, as you know, yeah. I like to do things differently and not necessarily what everybody says we should. This, I, you know, I, sometimes I call it uh, the path of shoulds. We, this is how we're supposed to run a business. This is how we're supposed to and there are rules, just FYI, because <laughs> there are rules as far as, you know, running, you know, healthy businesses and profitable right, right. businesses and all of the business essential and taxes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have taxes <laughs> to pay and, you know, we do need paychecks and lives to live. But I wanted to bring you on today and I wanted to, to continue the conversation we've had in the past about this path of shoulds. And can you share your take on that? Because I love you have such a great vision on that and how to create these interesting creative businesses our own ways and align and that's part of your branding and part of what you do every day <laughs> part of how you build your brand every day yeah so yeah was... yeah well you know I think the most important thing and and I teach this in my work I try to start this way with everybody that I work with the most important thing for not only entrepreneurs but every human I know <laughs> is to have a vision for the impact that they are going to create on the world or the world that they're co-creating with with the rest of the world. And we talk about vision statements. Like we all know the eighties, like cheese ball boardroom, like on the wall that nobody cares about. I mean, like nobody cares. And frankly, like, you know, maybe nobody beyond your, your walls cares about your vision either. Like that's fine, but it matters that you care about it. And so if you don't have a vision for the world that you're co-creating, then it's going to be really hard to create any, because you're just kind of reacting. So, so like my vision I have it on the wall in my office at home and I have heard my clients use these words verbatim and I don't say them. I don't run around telling everybody my vision, but what I am after the world that I want to create in my every single day, when I show up and do whatever I'm going to do that day, if I'm going to sell a house or lead a workshop or, you know, work one-on-one -on -one with a small business or re even rebrand them. What I care about is that I am co-creating a world in which more people feel seen, heard, and valued. And if that happens, I can, I win, I stay on brand, I'm achieving my mission. And so that allows me to create from like, from my creativity, from my inspiration, 
But what happens when you don't have a vision like that, that just fires you up and gets you out of bed in the morning is that you start, you know, if, if anybody's watching the video, like I've got my phone in my hand, you start scrolling through Instagram and you're like, oh, she, look what she's doing. <laughs> I didn't dance on a reel today. I better dance on a reel because you don't have any other thing that you're out there to do, you know? And so you all of a sudden start to become this very reactive, transactional, like figure out there who's just doing what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. And that's the worst marketing is when you're copying everybody else. The best marketing is when it doesn't look like marketing when you're showing up and being yourself. So that was a very long answer, but that's how I believe you can create yep. and, and be creative in your business pursuit is that you have to have a vision for the world you're making. And then once you have that, you know, whatever that, like, what does it look like to work with a realtor who has a vision like that? Well, I'm not going to make your decisions for you. I'm going to give you all the information you want, but I'm going to make sure that you feel seen, heard, and valued. That means you are going to make your decisions. I'm going to support you. I am going to amplify you. I'm going to pump you up. I'm going to give you everything you need to make a good choice. I'm not going to make it for you. You know? I love that. I love that so much. And you do stay aligned here. It's <laughs> so true. And cop well I, we could do a whole session on cop like trying to be like other people and trying to live other people's like vision and uh -huh. truthfully, i've seen people <laughs> try to do that from your point of view and shout out to everybody listening we'll have your instagram accounts <laughs> put in the uh, in the show notes because you stay true to your who you are and you're not for everybody and we're i'm not for everybody and whoever's listening is not for everybody and so that again is part of our impact and our mission right so yes. i agree with the whole like whatever wax poetic mission statement you might have on your wall, but you do have to live it. So I love that. And, and I love that when you work with your brand clients, that's where you start because most people don't, Uh huh. by the way. And, <laughs> and it doesn't start. And I don't tell them what their vision is. Like, like who cares what I think it is. If I told them what their vision is, they wouldn't feel seen, heard and valued, which means I, I would be off brand. Right. So I, I can't right. do that. It's not what I'm here to do. So, you know, we go through, I mean, we go through what feels like a painful exercise for my clients in the moment, but we do, have you ever heard of the five whys? Let's go through them. I love so, that. So, okay. Want to do it? I love Want to do it? it? You and me? Okay. Let's do it. Oh, now I'm scared. I do not know the five whys. But I'm <laughs> Okay. Five whys are easy. That, that part's easy, <laughs> yeah. but it's a tool that I use to help people get to their vision. Right. Yeah. So, you know. I worked with a client the other the other day and I started this way. Feel free to answer if, if you're comfortable, but we were working on her vision and I said, okay, why does this work matter? So Wendy, why does this work matter? I am really passionate about making sure that other people live, get to live the dream they want to live. They're, like whatever mm -hmm. that is, whatever that looks like. So I did not feel empowered when I was coming up in the in the business world. So I think we get my, I guess what, what I do and how I hope it's perceived by people. I am feeling like this is like, I probably should have this nailed, but I don't, no, but it is, no, I really, I, does. I'm, I'm internally wanting the ripple effect. I'm wanting, I'm wanting the ripple effect of, um, families being able to afford like the CEOs. I, and I've shared this before many times on the podcast, the CEOs, the board of directors that are sitting at your kitchen table, I want you to feel like really proud of the work that you're doing and living the life you want to live, whether that's a small business or I don't know, running away from home. Like I, did. I don't know, whatever it yeah. is, but I couldn't find any support around that when, as I was building my business. So, and, and thinking I was crazy. So I want people to not think it's crazy how to live, how you want to live. So be intentional. So, yeah. Why is it important that people are intentional? Because life is short. <laughs> so, that would be really, it's, you know, I don't know if you know the book, uh, 4,000 weeks, but anyhow, it's like, we don't have a whole lot of time. So let's have joy and alignment and have fun along the way. So why not do what matters? And why does it matter that more people are joyful and aligned? These whys are hard, right? 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, on the third one. Well, yeah, they are. We don't make it to five, but we yeah. try for five. And just so everybody, knows, I'm like, this is probably going to have to be deleted because I'm probably rambling here. But <laughs> why does it matter that, that they have joy? Yeah. Why does it matter? Like, why does it matter that more people have joy? What's the impact of that? Fulfilling lives. Like you mm -hmm. feel good doing what you're doing. And making a difference in your community. And again, 
that's a big thing for me. Mm-hmm. And your family, whether your community is a community or your family or your neighbors or your parents right. or whatever. So, and why do we want more communities feeling better? <laughs> Uh, I don't know how do why do we want more communities feeling better our our whole our whole life revolves around um how we live how we spend our days and so why, why not have are, fun and have happy healthy lovely awesome communities why not I love that yeah. okay and I love that we shifted this into this community conversation so everybody listening if you're in your car on your walk or whatever like cheer and clap for Wendy because this is not an exercise you just do like that so usually, you know, you'd sit down and journal on it and spend some time on it, maybe a couple of days. I'll do a workshop on visioning where we kind of go through this. I don't expect anybody to come out with a polished vision, but you just got some really interesting nuggets to start to really like work through and be like, wow, what, what is the world I'm co-creating? And the world you're co-creating doesn't exist today, P.S. It is, the, it is a future that, you're, that you are focused on building. So right. it, it is not the current state of the world. It, it doesn't exist because if it was, then it's not a vision. It's done. It's just a yeah. fact. Yeah, yeah. It's like, there's nothing to build. Right. So when you're building a vision, it's really like, what is that world I'm creating? Let's describe it. And so you've got some beautiful things here around, you know, communities full of fulfilled people who, who are living their lives. Like, I mean, I love all of that. And I think you've got some really juicy stuff here to put right into whatever way matters to you. I don't put my vision out anywhere. Right. You, you've never probably heard that before. Um, it's on my wall written in the way that I remember and that aligns for me. And that's all it is. And it, and if I had a a bigger team, like my team knows I I work with a couple of people, but if I had a bigger team, you know, maybe to have it on like more public wall, but it's really internal and it's just our driving force. And I love that. So on that note, let's talk about we're running businesses. We're self-employed running businesses. There's hard times. There's fun times. There's good times. There's, uh-huh. you know, ups and downs. Let Hello. We just have had this weird, <laughs> this weird thing happening and all the things. Yeah. And it's always <laughs> going to be happening. I, I, you know, we've been self-employed for over 25 years. There's just never like this. It's never done and never easy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry for those who are listening. I mean, it's, it can be fun along the way and it's how we, it's how we choose to perceive things um, in my opinion and how we choose to react and be in our businesses so there's the ups and downs, uh, Ferris wheel, we like to say, you know, going up and down. How do you see staying in alignment and making decisions about like, where does that come from? So for, for me, and I'll just share mine and, and I, and I, yeah. we've had conversations about this, you know, is it, it's not always easy to make decisions if we get off a- alignment huh? as far as back to that vision, back to what we're trying to do in this world. And mm-hmm how we're trying to do it and why we're trying to do it. Cause we get kind of wrapped up maybe in metrics, revenue goals, you know, so there's all these things. And then we get the dodgeballs of the pandemics and all these things. Can you share your philosophy? I, Cause I love this or your strategy or thoughts around um, making decisions to that keep you in alignment and being okay with that. If I, I hope you know what I'm trying to ask you. I do. I think yeah. everybody needs to go yeah. to therapy first of all. Yeah. Like, well, it just makes yeah. all this a lot yeah. easier, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and it is, I can joke about that, but, uh, but yeah. it's true. I mean, the more healed you are, the more free and sovereign you are in your decision-making, the less you're going to be held hostage to algorithms, what other people are doing, other people's social media strategies, your competitors, like yeah. the more that you can be good with you, the easier it is to stay in alignment. And it becomes almost impossible to come out of alignment if you can do that work. Now, the hard part is doing that work because it sucks. It's like healing your pain means you have to acknowledge your pain. And that's the worst part, right? So, and we all have, we all have all kinds of things. But what happens is we bring these stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves into our businesses. And when those stories are winning over the truth of who we are, we aren't going to make good decisions. And and we all tell ourselves stories. Like the human brain is wired in, to think in narrative pattern. That's what we do. And if we don't have sufficient information or data, our brain makes up stories. So if you have a decision to make and you don't have an, enough data, and by the way, not having enough data could be a, your story also, but if you don't have enough data, your brain is going to immediately say, this is what's happening. 
And yep. it is going to create a narrative pattern that explains the situation. Now, if your brain stories are inherently negative or, or unworthy or lacking, then the story you're going to tell yourself is going to come from that place. You're going to make a different decision. So it's really, really important that we get those stories in our head about who we are, our worthiness, how we're supposed to show up, how we're supposed to behave, what the world has told us about who we're supposed to be. And we, we get those really under control and we start to really understand inherently who, who we are so that we can make decisions that are in alignment. Tools like your vision help you stay in alignment, right. but ultimately you're gonna only do that to the degree to which you know, you're in a place where, where you're confident and believing in yourself to make those decisions. Well, and I, and I think that's wonderful. I mean, I think that's a really great way to look at it, but some these boxes we put ourselves in because of the stories we tell ourselves, Again, but I again I keep calling it the path of shoulds because we should all over ourselves all the time about well we should be doing TikTok I don't know whatever it is yeah. we should be doing all these things these these are decisions again back to that you know creative awesome local business and then we're like oh you know the story we tell ourselves the path of shoulds and all of these boxes that we maybe limit ourselves or think we're supposed to be in. They do affect from what I see from personal experience, from what I see with all of my clients, not all of my clients, uh, many of my clients, I see, you know, well, why are you doing it that way? And how is that serving you? And we get down these, I call it creep as well, too. We sort of end up all of a sudden we're, we're doing maybe business the way we thought we were supposed to do, but it really doesn't light us up anymore. Or we're serving clients that we really don't like. <laughs> You know, we've all yeah. been there. I mean, you know, we've all, not all of us, but many of us have experienced that. Like, how did I end up here in this maybe shop or studio or real estate business or whatever it is that we're doing with these people? Can you speak a little bit? There's a couple of things I'd love for you, for your, your take on this, because how do you stay true to yourself, your alignment and what lights you up? Because you're definitely one who stays true to her alignment. That's you know, it's, it, it's crazy. Awesome. But how you do that, but also, um, the run the business that we want to run. So staying true and, and having this healthy business, getting out of creep, getting out of that should path of shoulds, getting off that path. How do we get off that path? I'd love your take on that. I mean, you know, I'm going to bring it right back to worthiness again and, and learning, finding a way just I, I would love it if everybody could just get unrelenting about solving their worthiness issues, whether it's like, and I said therapy, I mean, you, that could be through coaching, whatever that looks like, whatever your avenue. I, I had a coaching program that was life-changing in 2020 that really helped me on this path. And then I did go see some, you know, some therapy and I have had a lot of work in that space. And I know you followed me longer than that. And if you followed me pre 2020, you would have been like, oh my gosh, you're so authentic to yourself. But now when I talk to people, they're like, whoa, like your energy is even more different, right? And, and it's an interesting thing because the way that I stay, like, let me just come back to that, that conversation about the creep. When you find yourself in that moment with a client that you're like, how did I get here? How did I build this business doing the things I don't want to do for people I don't really want to spend time with? And isn't it amazing how you will attract clients who don't value what's amazing about you when you don't value what's amazing about you? And what's amazing about you is what's unique about you. So the things that we are most ashamed of are usually the things we try to hide are usually the things that make us different. They're usually the things that are most amazing. So. If you hear my energy through the, this podcast, and I'm sure you can, I will tell you, I will enter. It's the strangest and most flattering phenomenon. The number one thing, and, and because I'm a branding person, I ask people all the time, can you describe your interaction with me in one word? And they'll say, it's your energy. Hmm. I'll do a keynote. People will be like, mm, I don't really know what you said, but wow, your energy. Like I get that all the time. Yeah. It's my energy, my energy. Well, what is the thing that also I was most ashamed of my whole life? My big energy. Like when I am in, you can, if you're watching now, you're watching my hand move all the time. When I was a little kid and I would be in pretend, I would flap my hands. Now, if you Google my kid flaps their hands, they will tell you all kinds of things they should be diagnosed with and all kinds of, you know, problems that they have. In the eighties, it was just really embarrassing for my adults that I was this kid flapping my hands, like off in my own mind playing make-believe. Well, luckily I found a way to make a living doing that. But when you're a little kid and you know that the way you are, when you're right. most yourself, when you're most 
engage when you're in a state of flow is mm-hmm. humiliating your protectors and the people around you. That's something. <laughs> Yeah. And and I have like amazing people around me. It's not about the people around me. I mean, it's it's a it's a thing. If you're a parent, you know sometimes your kid embarrasses you, and you uncover your own narratives. So when that thing about you that is your magic is also really embarrassing, it gets really hard to all of a sudden show up in the world and be like, "Hey, I'm the energy lady whose hands are going to fly around. I'm going to stand on stages and give keynotes, and my hands are going to do all this, and you have to move the chair or I'll fall over it because I can't sit still, and I'm probably going to talk fast." And I get in trouble for all these things my whole life. (laughs) It's just how it is. And we all have stuff like that, that we're like, oh, that's kind of embarrassing how I'm that way. I'm weird. I'm socially awkward. I always say the wrong thing, whatever, whatever it is. Those things about you are the very thing that will help somebody see themselves in you, that will make somebody want to work with you and make them trust you. And you're hiding them. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get out of alignment because we don't show up like who we are. Listen, if I have a client, that does not work out. And it happens. I was recently fired by a client a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I can promise you they did not spend a minute watching my videos on the internet because if they had, they would have never picked me. They're not like if someone, because they were triggered by the way I am. And so when I make content, I make an extreme amount of content. It's to attract and it's also to repel. Yes. It is so people can understand that when they meet me in real person, and and so when I teach marketing, I talk about brand integrity, the extent to which you are who you say you are. When I do marketing, all I want to do is replicate what's going to happen in real life because Mm -hmm. I don't want you figuring out that I'm not for you once we're in a contract, once I've done some work, once we're halfway in. I don't want you figuring that out then. I want you figuring out in advance. So I make so much content. You can decide. I'm not for you. No problem. Like, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. But, but don't come, you know, don't, don't get in this relationship. Let's do this together. Let's co-create something special on the same page. So true. It's also, you know, I love that. Um, I think there's some, I think there's some retailers out there that might need to rewind this a little bit, go back, go back, hit that 30 second back button or whatever it is on your podcast app and like re-listen to that. Are you showing up to your clients? Even the way people, so for my shop owners, people, the way people show up in their shop. So they have this social media presence, for example, of like, maybe it's just product, 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 (laughs) product, 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 you know, it's like, you know, whatever, what's what everybody else does, you know, then they come in the shop and the shop is like awesome or cool or vintage or eclectic or whatever the, you know, and it's like, whatever anyway so you're not showing up I and I agree I think and that's you know repelling repelling is just as important in my books as attracting so yeah I'm not for everybody in the way that you know I'm very imperfect (laughs) everything I do is like imperfect and I don't want to say like whatever I just we I just put it out and hope it lands right like you know and 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 come come if you're looking for perfect I'm not your person so but we all have our thing right so it is interesting another thing you know one of the things not to shift topics because I feel it's it's connected a segue is that what I'm supposed to say yeah how do we segue into this you know conversation and I want to honor your time I feel like there's so many things I want to ask you I've like literally let's keep going my head yeah so it's like a million (laughs) things in my head but one of the things that I've really admired about the way that you do business and your brand does business and your brand as Natalie because you have different businesses is it okay if we talk a little bit about some decisions that you made around the the marketing brand for a little bit? Yeah. You took took a pause. And I think this is a really, again, goes right back to alignment, goes right back to feeling like we should do things. Do you mind speaking a little bit about the decisions that you made around Made Marrow for, with your partner as well too? Yeah, 100%. So uh, Marrow Marketing or at Made Marrow on Instagram is my marketing business. And, you know, I have... <laughs> I have a business partner for years. It was my business partner and myself. We were face the content. We did everything together. We, we would split keynotes. I mean, you know, we were two halves of a whole. And in 2020, like about, or 2021, I guess, early 2021, a bunch of, you know, a bunch of different circumstances came about. But one of those things was my business partner had a different vision for her life in Yes, that happened on a workshop while I was teaching vision. So I was like, it was like heartbreaking and exciting at the same time, you know, but she had a different oh, vision. She's of her, listening her. to me and oh no. <laughs> yes. Right. 
yep. devastated, right? Simultaneously. Um, but she had a different vision for her life um, for some things that she really needed, wanted, needed to do. Like it was just the next step in our evolution. But we also weren't done, like done, done. Like, and I think what's so important about my business partner, Kira, like shout out to her. She's quite a bit younger than I am. And nobody's taught me more in business mm -hmm. ever. I've never met anybody like Kira. And she is maybe the most in integrity human I've ever met. And so Kira, you know, very bravely knowing, knowing that this was going to just destroy me, um, also couldn't not be herself. And I would never want her to not be herself. And so it, like our kind of decision to, we didn't know what we didn't know. And we still don't really know what we've, what we're doing mm -hmm. with, with the future of this business. But what we knew for sure is that she had a different vision and we, and we weren't ready to say we're done. Right. And so if you go back, I think it's June, 2021, there's kind of a, a farewell post and we strategized and talked about it for a long time. What is this going to look like? And we were like, it's going to look like the truth because it always has. We've always, we've, sh we shared the behind the scenes and building of that business. So raw. I look at the old videos, the first Facebook lives. Like I, I, I don't even know, like the things that we learned along the way, we were always sharing with our audience because our audience was just like us. They were small business owners, like early stages. So we always shared that. So when it came time for a, for a pause, you know, we didn't give like a lot of nitty gritty, but we also thought it was so important to show people that, you know what? you can do this and you can take a break. And I don't think I posted on that account for a year and a half. Yeah. Like, like we stopped taking clients and, and I have hooked up the biggest keynote of my life that I was so excited to go do in Toronto. That was, I, I, I booked that as Natalie, the co-founder of Merrill Marketing, the branding expert. And this is who these people, you know, are coming from all over the world to hear and I'm on this stage with like all of my heroes. I'm completely like, completely starstruck by the rest of the lineup. And now Mero isn't even a thing at this point, right? I'm, I'm a realtor. <laughs> like, I, I'm just yeah. like. Yeah. I um, love, I loved watching that journey. And I, I love, I love that you both stayed in an alignment. Anyway, yes, I know. That was so amazing. Like, yeah. Yeah, so, it was that, wild, right? That feel and I, I, I think what people need to hear from this is that sometimes we have to make decisions and pause or do the other thing or, you know, whatever it is, but keep, keep being brave. So what happened when you were on stage? I'd love to know that. I'd love personally. I mean, so, like, so, so many things, right? So many things. But I'll tell you that if I had followed like the shoulds out there, I would have quickly whipped up some kind of an offer and, you know, yada, yada, yada. So I could like play the part. And, and be that marketer that everybody expected me to be. But here's what I believe to, and, and know to be true. Marketing is just getting humans to take action. Right. That action can be a transaction or a sale, but it does not have to be. Like right. it does not, like you don't have to be selling something. You could be inspiring anything. Like I, I hope that anybody listening to this that is inspired by this conversation comes and follows me. And, you know, maybe there's something down the road that we work on together. I don't know. But right at this moment in time, I do not feel compelled to sell them anything. That's not, we're, we're exchanging energy and that's the marketing here. So I go to do this keynote with nothing to sell. Right. And I'm the only person without a book. I mean, the, that hasn't authored some kind of major thing. Like, like I'm literally the little kid, like in the room, you know, and of course, like also it goes amazing. Like, I would say, of course, it goes amazing, but like it goes amazing. <laughs> yeah. I feel like keynoting is what I'm put on the planet to do. Walk around the stage and flop my arms. Like that's that's the thing that I'm here to do. So I do I do my keynote, and then I'm in this room full of people with big businesses that all want to hire me, mm -hmm. or you know, a big chunk of them want to hire me. Like a significant portion of people are like. Yeah how can I hire you? I need you to see my marketing. Some of my heroes are like, how do I get her to work on my marketing? People I have followed and admired for like 10 years. How do I get you near my marketing? I just had somebody the other day that was in the audience that day that was a fellow speaker. And one of my heroes call me her marketing crush. Like it was, it was so surreal because I had nothing to sell. And, you know, and so it's yeah. like, there's almost like a lineup waiting after I come off the stage to be like, okay, how do we work with you? And I'm like, no, there's not, there's nothing. That was just, I just gave that to you. 
Mm -hmm. That is a very, very hard place to exist as a business owner to say that this is enough because the advice is that is not enough. Right. And I was like, I have the faith that for now, this is enough. Mm -hmm. I am an, my keynote was enough. And that is very, very challenging because the world is not telling you that the world is like, well, what do you mean? What about your business? You have, you know, all of these other things you should be doing, get these people into a sales funnel, Natalie. Right. And I'm like, can't we just have shared a moment? Can't we just continue to share moments mm -hmm. until I may have something that I want to serve them with. And maybe I don't ever like how freeing is that? It's, it's wild actually. <laughs> it's like, here's our, our sales, non-sales pitch. What are we calling this? The non-sales yeah. pitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here's how we just build community and connection and energy and stay again in alignment of what we value. Right. So, which is, yeah refreshing Natalie it's very refreshing it's like what if everything's not just a trick to get you to buy something mm -hmm. and then guess what happens Wendy when I have something to sell later p.s yes yes everybody okay. wants to buy it right yeah. like it's not like I'm not like but it's not it's not tricky it's just it's just the truth so I think that from where I sit mm -hmm. if we can reframe some things like marketing is just getting humans to take action I say that in every talk I ever give, I open that way because I need everybody in the room to believe that they're a marketer. And I don't care if they're getting their kid to eat dinner or, you know, brush their teeth or they're selling widgets or whatever it is. I need everybody in that room to understand that they, every single day, engage in marketing yep. mm -hmm. and that humans are neurobiological wire for connection. Yep. And that's what we're all walking around looking for. That's all we're doing. That's why we put people in boxes, PS, because we're like, oh, are they in my box? Are we the same? Like, that's all that that's about. And so if we can understand that marketing is getting humans to take action and humans take action in search of connection or in fear of disconnection, mm -hmm. then that makes this all really, really easy and complicated. It's wild. It's wild. So the, I just think that's, Take a pause here, everybody. Everybody's left from, if you've left, come back. Cause that was really good. No, do you have the rewind oh on that as well too? Like hit, hit the backspace. I'm always laughing. Cause I'm like, wow, I didn't distill that a little bit. Um, so we, we took a pause. You took a pause in your marketing and, you know, and, and everything was fine. I, and I want to just want to reiterate that like life did not end because Natalie decided to not post on that social media or take clients for a year. There were other things there were other values. There were other you know, priorities, life went on. Like, and I think, I think that's an important message because, you know, and then we didn't have to feel like we had to keep building that and keep it, keep it fresh. You did, I mean, you do it without knowing you do it. And then, you know, you can revive it. And you started posting again a little bit on there. No, you still don't even, I know you're not taking clients because I tried to be one of those people to hire you to take clients. And then she they're like, I the opposite of, yeah, I'm like, no, no clients. Yeah. yeah. Here's how not to do marketing. Like don't make money with hair. No, I just think it's refreshing. And I think it's really good. And you are right when, and there are some things that you have been offering like smaller things just in the local back to the local community, because what, what values to Natalie, one of your values is having local people seen and heard and, and whatever. So you're supporting them, you know, as a, you know, as a marketer, but also as a local lover, a community yeah. local lover. I don't know. I feel like that's a whole hat we should maybe dawn on some of us as well too, or, you know, community freaking cheerleaders. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's that a cheerleader my Instagram bio. bio. It's so funny you say that. That's my Instagram bio, but you're absolutely yeah. like, so, you know, so I, so even in the last few years, I still did yeah. consulting. I still did branding. It was just yeah. very like under the yes. radar right. and also did the biggest brands I've ever done. So, right. you know, word of mouth, like HGTV star type stuff, household name type stuff. And, you know, just like, just totally surreal. So I still was doing that work, but not advertising it, not right. really wanting people to know about it because I just, hadn't sorted it. I just hadn't sorted. Where is this? And I had, like I said earlier, a lot of healing to do. I'm not going to, I'm not going to diminish that part of the journey. When my business partner and I 
went on our break, which is what I'm calling it right now, you know, when we went on our break, I mean, there was some healing I had to do. It had nothing to do with what she right. was leaving. It had everything to do with my own personal internal narratives about what happened. What does it mean when someone wants to do something else? Right. And and turns out, you know, I had all kinds of weird stories I would tell myself about when somebody had other priorities that didn't involve me. And so I had a lot of healing to do to get here too. And the last thing I wanted to do was bring my stories that were not my best stories into someone else's brand. Right. I was extremely well, thoughtful and careful about it. And so sometimes when you work on those bigger brands like that, they end up being a little more transactional by the nature of the amount of people involved. And, you know, the creativity gets kind of like toned down a little bit. And that felt actually quite safe to me because big brands like that really don't kind of get outside the box much. Mm -hmm. But when you start getting into a small business owner that is investing everything they're going to invest this year into the brand that you're building for them, your heart and mind better be clear. And I just wasn't there. And so that also is, is an honest part of my journey where that work needed to be done on me so I can do a better job with my clients. And I'm still kind of piecing together what that's going to look like. I know that like I'm on the other side of a lot of personal healing, but that matters so much in how I show up with the people and the clients that I want to serve best. Right. And yeah. And help them with their mission, right? Not yours. Yeah. Right. Your, yeah. their, their vision and their mission and, and not 100%. your hundred percent. So yeah. Yeah. You know, and again, like, I don't know why we feel like we need to have permission to do it, to take our time or to do it our way, or I don't know. I, I, I feel we're like all, we're in a culture of faking it all. Let's just be honest. Right. So it's like, oh God, what are people going to think if we post on Instagram that we're taking a break and we don't know when we'll be back? Right. Like, what right. are people going to yeah. think? Right. Wow. Well, do you know what the result of that is? Like hundreds of comments of people being like, do you know what this business has meant to me? Do you know what, like, like the most actually like beautiful, I go back and read them sometimes on that post, the comments on that post of how meaningful the work was and therefore is right. So why is it coming back to life? Because I can't live without it. <laughs> Like, I can't, I can't yeah. not do it. Like I, you know, so I'm doing this little social media workshop. It's not, you know, it's not a great big revenue generator in my life. That's not why I'm doing it. I want to go be with my people. I want to go be with these folks that have small businesses in my community and help them be seen and heard. That matters a lot to me. And when you're a local business, PS, how you're being seen and heard does not look the same as when you're a digital online business with no yes, borders, right? I agree. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, if you're thinking that you need 10 K Instagram followers for your small local, sh like shop, no. you're crazy. Like they might not, you might be in a town of like 10,000 people, your whole town's not going to follow. So if you have too big a following in a small community, that means you have people that are not actually ever going to be your customers who are now going to be influencing your algorithm, which means it's going to be less likely to reach the people you want to. You might only need 400 followers, 300 followers to have a great business that's locally based. And we need to let go of all. So that's why this work is so important to me. Mm -hmm. I want those shoulds at all their heads. They're going to watch Instagram and hear all the experts tell them how to do everything. And like, you know, 90% of it is like subjective in BS. Well, I, yeah. No, I, no, I, I, I always say I preach that. I hate saying that I, I teach that in a very thoughtful way. No, <laughs> just, but real people, in, preaching. Yeah, real people in real communities walking through your real doors is how I try to like describe that because those are the people that matter. You know, the people in your neighborhood, <laughs> your community, yeah. It, there's not like, so if a hundred people are on your Instagram and anyway, I know we could talk all day about that, but a hundred people on your Instagram that actually live in your community that love you and are your allies and believers are what, are, like they're more valuable than a hundred thousand people on an Instagram following. I, I think because there are a hundred people that are going to come in regularly and there are a hundred people, like if a hundred people just showed up this morning, y'all would be freaking out, right? <laughs> like, you know, yeah. it's like right now, if everybody just walked in the door. So I think it's really, I think it's really uh, important to bring that back local and your brand like and, and uh, this is I'm not a branding person as you know but your brand is only what people believe you to be like what people say you are right yeah. <laughs> like you know and how you yeah. make them feel how you make them seen how you how you help them show up in the world or how you help them you know feel good about the products with the products you sell and uh, you know and and then coming back as a small business owner I always say 
you know, how are you making people feel, you know, and, and we joke like not marketing, but when I teach marketing or when I teach how to get foot traffic, or when we talk about marketing in in small shop life, you know, really it is, what do people need? What are they feeling? What are they seeing? You know, how are you, how are you treating them? Like that it's, again, it's all about, that's how our, my, I feel like our brands are perceived. Again, that's how you talk about showing up and how are we showing up? Cause we're small business owners and we need to have a good quality of life or whatever, like whatever, back to that mission, you know, back, back to that vision and mission. Um, you know, are we really living that and, and doing that every day? And it all comes together. I think it all works together <laughs> when you do it your own way for your people. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Well, I want to honor your time. I again, I feel like I could have another um, million questions for you and we'll have maybe have to have you back on here. Yeah. Have me back. Uh, are you up for rapid fire questions? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Like Natalie's game for anything. I'll right? do anything. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, okay. When you're not working, what's your favorite thing to do? Uh, I don't like not working. I know. <laughs> so I'm like, you and me, girl, you and me. I'm like, oh, I'm like, you know, I said, I have all these like weird new facts about myself as I'm like on this journey of like really understanding my authentic self. And one of them is that I hate long weekends. I think they are just like, just the worst invention ever I think you know we have Saturday Sunday that keeps everything on schedule do not add another day in because I'm very routine oriented so when I'm not working what am I doing oh I am probably at football yeah. my boys play football and it is my husband coaches my boys playing football I'm the loudest mom in the place I not like yelling at people I feel like I'm giving my energy to my children to help them carry them, you know, along the field, right? So it's a gift that I offer that uh, the other parents seem to find entertaining unless they're on the other team. And then I one time had a mom try to fight me at a game. But <laughs> that sounds like a story. That we that's have. for another day. That's yeah, for another day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, your mission is to have people see, be seen. So it's only yes. right that you're, you know, you're portraying that out onto the field with the boys. So, you so know. it's all from a place of love. And yeah. I know that Brene Brown also screams really loud at her daughter's swim meet. So I feel um, like a lot better about that. Yeah. It's <laughs> a complete side note, but you, you share that you talk with your hands a lot. I do too. I don't know. Like I always, and I was always told to stop. And I even teaching, I've had business coaches say like, you know, you're, you're, you're using your hands too much. And I, I try to sit on them and not use them, but I'm going for it now. So what anyway. a waste of energy though. Yeah, right? What a waste of energy. Like what a waste of energy. Like, do you know, you want to see what I did while we were talking? I did all of this while we were talking. And notes. that allows me to be the notes, uh, drew a flower. Like I'm never going to look at it again, but what it allows me to do is channel that extra energy that I have this way so I can focus this way. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And if I don't do that, I'll act like really like performative and you know, nobody wants that. I love that. I love that. Well here now, this might be a great answer for that, but what's a surprise or hidden talent that you have? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little nervous to ask you this, to Natalie, because I know you have lots, but maybe it's focusing and but anyway. I'd say like a hit, like not a lot of people know that I played uh, competitive badminton for my university and went to national. So that's, I've been thinking about that a lot lately because I'm doing some work with student athletes at my old university. So uh, not a lot of people know that about me, but yeah, very, very competitive at sport. I'm not surprised by that. Just after following you, I would also say maybe not a hidden, but a talent that I think that you have that is not related to your business, but maybe your brand the whole big energy thing is that you are really good at um, the talent that I feel like you have is keeping us engaged in like the cleaning things going on in your house. I learned so much from you about cleaning hot tubs and like you're a fax jack person. Did you know? <laughs> Natalie shares all kinds of interesting things on her Instagram. So that's a hidden talent, I think. Uh, thank you. Uh, when Oh, well, here, how about this? Do you think as an entrepreneur, are you born with it? Or is it a learned thing? Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I think anybody can be an entrepreneur. What about leadership then? To the, frame that to, to the degree to which they're self-aware, right? So I think anybody can be a successful entrepreneur, but you have to be honest with yourself about what you're good at and what you're not, mm -hmm. and then be able to supplement what, what is not your strength. So I think, you know, I don't, 
I would have never, I did not ever want to be an entrepreneur. I one time went to work for an entrepreneur in his small business. And I was so scared to do that, that I made my husband go incognito to like uh, an event he was speaking at to like try and figure out, we were trying to figure out if this person, you know, was sane enough for me to go and like put all my eggs in that basket. So I had a side hustle, but I was never, ever, I didn't have the confidence. And again, that's all learned, right? So I feel like I had to unlearn to be an entrepreneur, if that makes sense. I think that's a great answer. And I do think that that's very true. Like you can be born with it, but not want to do it maybe (laughs) as well. Like, so, yeah. And I also think there's a difference between entrepreneurship and leadership. And I think you have to be a leader in order to be a successful entrepreneur Mm -hmm. because leadership is a whole different thing, but anyhow, Mm -hmm. that's great. Any favorite biz books or podcasts or anything like, how do you like anything that, that you take input from that either currently or is a must share with our audience? I mean, if anybody, we talked a little about, about worthiness. So if anybody is like, well, I'm really interested in like confronting some of my money stuff, uh, we shall be millionaires by Rachel Rogers, hmm. hands down. Also Jensen Chero's you are a badass at money is very good for like reframing. Okay. Um, so I think those two books, I think every woman should read those two books. I'm, I'm doing a talk on Friday for International Women's Day at my kids' high school. Can you even, like, can you even, my poor kids? I know how embarrassing, right? Uh, but I've been thinking about, like, what am I going to talk to this group of people about? And one of the things that, well, what I do know that I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about um, the way that society has inherently set up women and girls to believe that they shouldn't be trusted with money. And, you know, how recently, Wendy, like, women couldn't get their own credit cards in Canada, how recently you had to have your husband co-sign, I think. Was it, did you tell me, or was it Kim, your sister, who told me that for her business, she had to have her husband sign on, on the bank documents? Like, very, just, yeah, it's very, very common thing right now. Yeah. People yeah. Are going yeah. That in Canada right now. Now, now, right now, trying to get a loan. Anyway, it's crazy to me, like that this is still a thing. So it is still a thing. We, yeah. You and everybody listening need to go follow my, my business coach. One of my business coaches, April Stroink. She's amazing. And she has that conversation all the time. And she's a, Mm. she's an incredible, and I love Jen, Jen Sincero. I can never say her name as well. That book on audio, anybody listening that loves audio. If you're listening to podcasts, you probably do. That book on audio is so good. Funny. She's funny. She's awesome. You know what? She takes breaks too. She takes breaks. She takes breaks. You just won't even know that she exists for a year. And then she'll be like, boom, I have a book, you know? And I just, I think I've seen a lot more of that during the pandemic. Like I mentioned Rachel Rogers in her book, you know, she's that's, I was in her business coaching program years ago and you know, she, she paused her podcast for a long time another Allison, awesome with Allison podcast that paused for a long time during the pandemic while people were sorting out their stuff. Right. And like, if you don't undertake entrepreneurship as a personal development journey, like if yeah. you don't see that, you know, the coincidence there, like, trust me on this one, let yourself, it, you're, you'll never learn more about yourself. Yeah, I agree. And I, and again, taking the pause if you need it, that's our, you know, and I do think again, reevaluating, what what we're doing and it's okay it's okay to do it your way and it's okay to do it. anything else to share natalie as we're wrapping up last question anything else uh no i i i don't have anything else to add i've said so many things probably more than i should <laughs> but uh but wendy i just want to thank you so much for everything you do and the way that you show up i think that um obviously your listeners know how awesome you are but it's really special to be able to connect with someone who values the uniqueness of my brand because not everybody does. Right. And, um, I don't take that for granted. I feel seen, heard and valued. So thank you. That's good. I do. I do appreciate you. And I will have all of your, your Instagram and all your of my many Instagrams and, and anything to sell Natalie. No, I know so. nothing to sell, <laughs> but if you're, unless you have a house in greater Moncton, because yes. we are under inventory. <laughs> there's a plug there's a plug for real estate in Moncton. uh so that's fantastic thank you so much for your time and your attention uh for my for my listeners i think there's so many gold nuggets i don't even know how i'm going to pull all the nuggets out of this one for everybody so uh thank you for your time uh and we'll see you soon natalie thank you thank you well that's it for this week's episode of the creative shop talk podcast 
I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week, and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week. Bye.